What's up, Poker Beast Kato here, and today we're playing cards. Let's hit the phone. Welcome back to the vlog. You know how I love to pump out content, so buckle up because it's going to be coming fast. I'm doing my standard $300 bind today, and the first hand that we look at is Jack 8 of Hearts. In the cutoff, there's a straddle on the pot. And the middle position player's limped. Jack eight is right on the edge of my cutoff opening range, and I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and bump it up to $25. I'm gonna get a quick call from the button who's got about $100 behind, and a folds back around to the middle position player who completes for the rest of the $19. He has me covered. We're going to the flop three ways with $85 in the pot, and the flop comes Jack, Jack nine. I think we've seen this before. Remember last episode? It's a little different though. My kicker is lower than I want it to be. The first player checks, and I'm going to go ahead and continuation bet. You know my style, $35. The button calls, and the middle position player calls. I'm sensing snakes in the grass. There's only one jack left. Who has it? The turn is the three of spades. Doesn't change much. It does put a backdoor spade draw out there. And when it's checked to me, I'm going to go ahead and price people in or out of this pot with a big bet of $125. I'm not sure if this is the correct move, seeing as I have a jack with a low kicker. There are two players willing to invest a decent amount of money into this pot, and it may have been better if I went ahead and checked this as well. I don't always need a bet. I don't always need to show aggression. There are times when it's better to check, especially when you have a player to my left who's basically pot committed. He does decide to go all in for his remaining $45, and then that's when the snake strikes. The middle position player announces all in. He has me covered. I only have $115 behind. I know that I'm in big trouble, but I can't really fold at this point. Hopefully he has a jack with a lower kicker, or maybe I can get a nine or a three on the river. The river comes, and it is indeed a three. I say, I knew that saved me. After my opponent flips over Jack 10 offsuit, he had me right where he wanted me. I was all in on my very first hand. Could I have showed some discretion, slowed down on the turn, checking, I think I should have, and I think I could have. You have to be 100% at all times focused to know when these small little errors are going to come back and really bite you, really cost you a lot of money. Luckily, I was bailed out that time. Vlogger's luck prevails. I did make a small profit of $54. I'm sitting at $354. I fold away some junk hands, and then the dealer pitches me some cards. Pocket kings, two beautiful red kings in the cutoff, $354 my stack. The under the gun player limps, the middle position player decides to limp as well. I'm not sure of the dynamic of this table. I'm going with my standard $15 bet. The button makes the call, the small blind comes along, the big blind comes along, and then the under the gun player who limped decides to go all in for his remaining $64. That limp all in move is dangerous, but of course, I'm going to call. The question is, do I raise? I think in this situation, it's okay to invite other players into the hand, especially if I think that I may be beat. There's a very small percentage of the time chance that I am, but if he flips up aces, I'm not making any more money. If I can get some more people into the pot, and if two aces are out of the deck, I could definitely make some more money. I'd like to just call. Unfortunately, everyone else folds away. We're going heads up for a full run out. The board comes 5-3-10, safe. The turn is a four, and the river is a seven. I think I'm in good shape. My opponent holds up a three. I'm thinking he might have pocket threes, but luckily he flips out an ace with the three. One pair, I'm good. I'm scooping the $182 in the middle of the pot. This is an exciting session. Very shortly later, I get pocket tens under the gun, 454 in my stack. I'm gonna bump it up, $15, and the middle position player makes the call. Everyone else folds. We're going heads up to the flop, $34 in the pot, and the dealer puts out ace, four, five, two spades. I decide a continuation bet. I'm going to go with half pot. That ace is very scary on the board if you don't have one, and the board's dry enough to where he might just throw away a lot of his holdings. He decides to call instead, and the turn is the seven of hearts. I'm going to check this one, and my opponent checks back. The river is the nine of spades, and I'm going to go ahead and check, thinking about making a call. He may have tagged along with an ace, and he throws in $35. Now, I have the second highest card on the board. It's a concealed pair, but I also have to invest more money on the river than I have put in on the entire hand. I'm learning that that is typically a no-go. A lot of money is lost on the river, and it's so tempting to make that call on the river because the hand's over, you get to see the showdown, you get to see if you win, and you have a chance to win that money. I decide, in this case, to let it go. It turns out to be the wrong decision. My opponent flips up queen of diamonds, eight of spades, absolutely nothing. And I'm not sure why he called on the flop unless he was just planning on making a move. He didn't believe me. Congratulations to him. He made a bluff and it's on the Poker Beast channel forever. I have $342 in my stack. I look down at ace nine of spades in the big blind. There's a straddle on the pot. The middle position player limps. 
The cutoff bumps it up to $15. The button makes the call. I'm going to tag along. I could 3-bet here, but I don't think my stack is large enough to put in a 3-bet. I'm just going to try to hunt for my flush. The under the gun player calls, the middle position player calls, and we're headed to the flop five ways with $76 in the pot. The dealer puts out 10-3 ace. I hit my ace. My kicker is not so great. There's a backdoor spade draw, and I check it around to the original raiser who bets $30. I'm going to go ahead and see one more card. I make the call. $30. Everyone else folds. We're headed to the turn. $136 in the pot, and the dealer puts out the eight of clubs. My dream of hitting the nut flush is gone. I checked my opponent. I'm going to fold to a big bet, but I think my opponent has me honed in. I think he has a real nice taste for what I have because he bets the same amount, $30. This just screams I'm sucking value out of you. Deep in my soul, I know this. This is why it takes me a long time to make the call. I just know that I'm throwing money away. I talk myself through it. I know the answer, but then I look at all those reds in the middle of the pot, and I get dragged right in. The river comes out the king of clubs. Changes nothing. I check to my opponent, just begging him to bet $50 so I can fold, but he doesn't. He bets another 30 Of course, I already know what the answer is on the turn. Nothing's changed on the river. This is probably where I lose most of my money, and probably a lot of us lose most of our money here. We know the answer. We feel it in our mind, in our logic, in our soul, but we just still make the call, knowing that when he flips over the hand, it's gonna be a better hand. And in this case, he has a set of tens. He had me all the way, and he milked me for all the value that he could. Nice hand. I started off by building a decent stack, and now I've thrown it all away to what was a seemingly small hand, but there's no small hands when you're wagering money. I threw away 100 bucks, and now I'm down to 237. I rebuy for 100, and I top off to 300. Focus at the poker table is very important. I barely made any mistakes, and they were all involved in pretty small pots, but alas, now I'm in for 400 rather than being up 150. I fold away a bunch of junk hands until I look down in the big blind at ace two offsuit with $299 in my stack. This isn't a hand that I would typically play, but for whatever reason, I decide to. There's a straddle in the pot. The cutoff makes the call. The butt makes the call. The small blind bumps up to $12. I didn't see him raise to 12. I thought he just called. I saw a lot of dead money out there. I do have an ace. And so I decided to bump it up to $28. Little did I know that I was three petting him. It folds around to the small blind and he makes the call. I have position. I have the fact that he thinks that I'm three betting him. So he probably thinks I have something decent. And so I'm still going to try to capitalize and win the hand. The flop comes out, jack, five, deuce. I hit my deuce. I have a pair. It's not a good pair, but I'm going to continue betting, representing a good hand. He's kind of a timid player at times. I bet $30, and he thinks about it and makes the call. The turn is the five of diamonds. He checks to me. I say, it's okay. I'm going to check back. If he, have a, if he has a jack, he's not going to fold, and the river comes the eight of diamonds. When he checks to me, I think the same logic. If he has a jack, he's not going to fold. Let's see what he has, and he has king, queen, offsuit. My pair of deuces is good. I'm scooping the pot, and it has $132 in it. I'm headed in the right direction. 372 in my stack. I straddle on the button, and I look down at ace, jack, offsuit. I'm experimenting with the button straddle. I think it could be plus EV at times. Let me know what you think in the comments. The under the gun player makes the limp. The hijack bumps it up to $12. And once again, I'm going to three bet him, this time to $25. It's a little deja vu moment. I want to apply the pressure, and I want to capitalize on my position. He makes the call. We're headed to the flop, heads up with $70 in the pot. And the dealer puts out deuce four jack. I hit my top pair. I'm not worried about straights or flushes. And so when he checks to me, I decide I'm going to check back to him. I usually don't do that. I like to put money in the pot, especially when I have a hand. I don't like giving people free cards, but I think to myself, let's let him catch up a little bit. In hindsight, I would have preferred just to bet. The turn comes a deuce of clubs. He checks to me, and I bet $15. Very, very small bet into this pot. I probably should have made it a little bit larger, but I'm just trying to extract any amount of value as I can. He makes the call. And the turn is the queen of spades. When he checks to me, I know that the queen may have hit him. It's over my jack, but I still want to extract value. If he calls me and has the queen, so be it. If he raises me, I'll just fold. But I bet another $20, and he makes the call. And I flip over my ace jack, and it is good. That thin value bet on the river paid off, and that can pay off big time over the long run. I want you guys to start incorporating that in. Don't be scared that you're going to get it re-raised. If you get re-raised, that's fine. That means just fold. But you cannot be afraid of going for thin value on the river. There's a lot of money to be made, and just like with the set of tens hand that I lost to, 
Once you're at the river, you want to see the showdown, and so it's easy to milk people for more money. And once again, if they re-raise you, that's the perfect sign that says you're beat. Just fold. The next hand's a beauty, ace king of spades. I'm in the low jack, 453 in my stack, and there's a straddle on the pot. The under the gun player limps, the middle position player limps, and of course I'm going to put in a raise. The question is how much. I decide $30 is perfect. It folds around to the small blind who makes the call. Everyone else folds. We're going heads up to the flop, $81 in the pot, and the flop comes out 5, 8, 10. Of course with ace king, chances are you're not going to hit anything, and that's my case right now. But of course I'm going to continuation bet. When he checks to me, I have position, I have a strong ace that still could be winning which does give me some showdown value, which could suggest that maybe I should check, but I don't like to check, I like to bet, and I decide on $55. My opponent thinks about it, checks his cards, and makes the call. The turn is the 10 of hearts. If he had a 10, he's definitely not going anywhere now. Pocket fives or eights are definitely in his range for a full house. He could just be begging that I put more money in. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna check. The river comes out the 10 of diamonds. I'm not so worried about him having a 10 anymore. I definitely think he would have bet if he did have something strong. His pocket fives or pocket eights are now absolutely crushed. I do have my showdown value with an ace, but I want to push him off a pair of fives, a pair of eights, a set of fives or eights, a lot of small pocket pairs. And so I put him to the test and I rip it all in. $150 for him to call. It's a lot of pressure and he folds immediately. I decided to get a little creative and it paid off. The next hand I get is pocket tens. I'm in middle position, 483 in my stack, and there's a brand new player in seat seven. He saw that I was vlogging, and he said, please refer to me as the drunk guy in seat 7. This is his very first hand, and he put $25 blind in the pot. I am decided I'm going to bump it up to 50 He says, no, no, don't do that before going in for the kill. He raises it $100 on top, bringing his bet to $125. He says he's drunk. It's his first hand. It's a blind bet. I don't know what he has, but I'm not putting on, on anything that beats 10s. I ask him how much he has. He says 280 and I go all in. He calls immediately, and he flips over his hand, ace king. I decide I'm gonna be a gentleman, show him what I have, pocket tens. It's a traditional race. Let's hope for a clean run out. No ace, no king on the flop, and of course, there's an ace. The ace always seems to come. I'm down to two outs. The turn is one of them. The ten spikes, the river's the queen of diamonds. Whew. Why am I just constantly getting lucky? It feels great. I'm not gonna complain. I was ahead at the beginning of the hand, so I didn't get that lucky. But to spike that 10 on the turn, change the trajectory of my night. I'm getting a nice big pot. Finally, after all this effort of going up and down for the evening, I get the hand that I've been waiting for, and I add over $300 to my stack. I'm sitting at 770. I will get into a few hands that I, where I just have to fold away on the flop. I drop my chip stack down to 685. I sit there for about another hour. It's a really fun table. I don't want to get up and leave. But sometimes you get that itch, and when I get the itch, I go. I rack my chips up, and I head to the cage to turn them into cold hard cash. Man, it feels good saying that. I'm in for 400, out for 685, for a profit of 285. Let's go. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cato out.